And they didn't have a three-point line back then. They so did not. <laughs> So it has been a struggle all season long. Roy Williams, notoriously known for his offense, has never coached a team that has averaged less than 72 points per game. And this North Carolina team, well below that number. But doesn't matter what the record is, when the uh, team wearing the Carolina Blue shows up, it's a big deal. But it's always going to bring the crowd. Great crowd here at the Oakland Zoo tonight to cheer on his Panthers, who lost a tough one on Tuesday night with a questionable call that I'm sure we'll see at some point. Adis Tony puts Pittsburgh on the board first, and he is part of a dynamic sophomore class that is Jeff Capel builds things back up here in Pittsburgh is going to be the catalyst for that. And Adis Tony, his ability to defend, actually was the main person behind Jordan War scoring 14 points on Tuesday night. The ACC leading scorer, and Adis Tony gets a lot of credit for holding War to a very modest night. Xavier Johnson, the sophomore guard, 6'3 from Woodbridge, Virginia. Being checked by Leaky Black. He goes right around him, but good help by Armando Baycott. Pittsburgh comes in with a 2 and 4 league record. Carolina 1 and 4. And they typically only 500 overall, 8 and 8. Three point shot by Justin Champagny, well short. And Champagny only got four field goal attempts against Louisville on Tuesday night, but had a big game against North Carolina in their previous meeting. Great feed by Playtech in the finish, plus the foul. And that is traditional. North Carolina secondary break back screen lob that Dean Smith made so popular. And one of the reasons why North Carolina is notorious for playing two bigs because you have one posting up while the other can go over the top as Garrison Brooks does on, does on that possession. And Trey McGowan picks up the foul, giving Brooks the opportunity for the and one. And Roy Williams told us in no uncertain terms before the ball game, we got to go inside. They do have to go inside because their two best scores are on the interior. And you see it's been a concerted effort by the Tar Heels to get inside early, but they can play inside out and knock down a couple of threes like Leaky Black does in his possession. Now the Tar Heels can be in business. Leaky Black looks good on his first shot despite a wrist injury suffered last time out. Missed practice time this week. But if they can get any sort of three-point shooting on the perimeter, the Tar Heels are going to be so much better. Well, Leaky Black, and of course, Brandon Robinson, who was in a car accident earlier in the week, as well as Jeremiah Francis, all three of those guys not really getting any practice work until Thursday. So it could be a little rust for the Tar Heels, who had a bye week this week, not having a midweek game. And this is the eighth consecutive game. North Carolina's playing without its excellent freshman guard, Cole Anthony. Still rehabbing after knee surgery. Playtech gives it up. Baycott has it poked away by Johnson. You see right away, Pittsburgh is going to double-team the post whenever it goes inside to Baycott or Brooks. A nice play there by Xavier Johnson getting into the paint but recognizing the defender coming over to help. Dropping it off to Hamilton for the easy bucket. Well, Johnson among the ACC leaders at five assists per game. Hamilton with his first two. 5-4 Carolina early. In they go to Garrison Brooks. And they're going to dare Leaky Black to shoot the basketball. Nice pump fake there, unable to finish it. But Leaky Black, Andrew Playtech, and Brandon Robinson, these guys are going to get a lot of looks because of the post presence of Baycott and Brooks on the block. There is the 17th year head coach at the University of North Carolina, 69 year old back at his alma mater. And uh, we have seen things and heard things from Coach Williams we have never seen before in the, the last few weeks as this program struggles its way through the 2019 2020 season. Well, and Coach Williams is going through things that he's never been through before, especially at North Carolina. As you see, three national championships. With that. But one of the things by talking with Coach Williams, you see there's no level of contentment with a coach that's won three national championships. It's all about winning the next game. That's the most important thing. Johnson, tough shot. And the foul call against Leaky Black with only two on the shot clock. And there is Jeff Capel, the 44-year-old native of Fayetteville, North Carolina. A coaching lifer. Of course, he played at Duke and uh, had head coaching stops at VCU and at Oklahoma and then uh, went back to Duke and coached for several years under Coach K. And, and what has changed in your eyes for Coach Capel since getting back into the head coaching game after his apprenticeship with Coach K? Well, he's a much more patient coach. 
And of course, he's older, which means that he is a little further detached from the players that he, you know, Jeff took over at VCU before he was 30 years old. And so you're talking about a young man whose father was a great coach, Jeff Capel Jr. And he's grown up around coaching his whole life is almost destined to be in this situation. And his dad had passed away in November of 2017, was head coach at Old Dominion, North Carolina A&T in Fayetteville State. He was an assistant coach in the NBA at a couple of stops as well. Was my assistant coach with the Charlotte Bobcats, of course, in their inaugural year coming back to Charlotte. Glad to see that the Hornets again now. <laughs> no doubt. Tony into the paint. From the short corner, Terrell Brown with two points off the bench. And Terrell Brown is a capable scorer. Ten points on the road at Miami with five for six from the field and actually made Pitt's first field goal after seven minutes of action in that game. Pitt got off to a 0-16 start. Gave Miami a 16-point lead to begin the game and finally got it together. That's one of the things that Jeff Cape was searching for with his team is a level of consistency. Seeing them come out, got off to a great start here at home against Louisville, and right now, a pretty decent start against the Hill. Champagne's a perfect example of that. And he was a big part 10 days ago of the game in Chapel Hill of why Pittsburgh won that game, but he, well, he's a freshman, and so he doesn't have the ability yet to sustain it. Well, and you see the same thing on the other end of the floor, who Champagne's guarding, Armando Baycott. Both these guys as freshmen have had big games, also have had some... And I'd say that right now, this is my lowest one because losing this game was my fault. Uh, told them if I die tomorrow or 20 years from now, that'll be the biggest uh, regret I have in 32 years as a coach. Because these kids really need to win. And their coach let them down today. Corey Alexander, you've known Roy Williams for decades. What's your take when you see Roy like that? Well, one of the things with Coach Williams is he truly is about family, and he recognizes that these young men who are playing and putting on the Carolina Blue are his family. As we see all these Tony coming up with the turnover and putting it back through with both hands. But when you think about this being his family, he understands how bad his family is struggling right now. And so anything that he can do to help his family out, he's willing to do. But he felt like he let them down. And it's something that, of course, each and every coach has a different philosophy on. Do you foul? Do you not foul? But right now, as you look at North Carolina in the midst of a three-game losing streak, and have already had a four-game losing streak earlier this year, this is new territory for the Tar Heels and definitely new territory for Roy Williams. When you look back over his 16 seasons at North Carolina, you go back to the 2009-2010 season where they missed the NCAA tournament. He likens that, se that season to this one, but that's a year they still won 20 games. And right now, sitting on eight has been a struggle for the Tar Heels. Champagne missed the layup. Yeah, and those comments we just saw from last weekend were a week after Roy, following the loss to Georgia Tech, said, Quote, this is the least gifted team I've coached in the time that I've been back here in Chapel Hill. So you have had a couple of really jarring statements from a coach that you're just not used to seeing that. And, and, and for as jarring as it's been in Chapel Hill for the Tar Heels not to be so good this year, it's jarring for all of college basketball not to have UNC at or near the top of the heat. It, it really is. But, you know, the thing about that comment about being the least gifted team, it was the truth. And he caught for us a lot of heat because of it. But the reality behind it is we want coaches to be upfront and honest with us. But yet, you destroy them when they do. This is the least gifted team that he's had in his 17 years right. at North Carolina. They're playing without Cole Anthony, who will be a lottery pick. They have Armando Baycott, the only McDonald's All-American that they have on the roster outside of Cole Anthony. And he's a freshman playing. Outside of that, you've got a number of inexperienced guys. So they were fortunate a year ago to have Luke May, who developed greatly as a walk-on. You had Cameron Johnson, a grad transfer from Pittsburgh, and then you've got the two McDonald's All-Americans at Kobe White and Nasir so Little to go along with the, the, one of the best role players, Kenny Williams, that North Carolina's had. So when you look at that, but they lost all five of those guys from a year ago. And so now you're left over 
with players who honestly in a normal North Carolina year may not be starters starting the game off. These guys will be backups, but right now, Brandon Robinson, you know, Christian Keeling, grad transfer, Justin Pierce, grad transfer. These guys are forced into starting roles. Jeremiah Francis, the freshman guard, is coming to the game for Carolina, which has now turned the ball over three times. Christian Keeling also. It's now a 12-2 Pittsburgh run after the bucket by Tony. And, and, and those of you who do not recognize Ardis Tony, he's the young man who cut all of his hair off and looks almost identical to Russell Westbrook, especially when he's attacking the basket the way he did in the last possession. Well, Corey, you know who his cousin is? Who's his cousin? John Petty at Alabama. Oh, well, Still got the hair. Yeah, Petty's not cutting that hair. <laughs> <laughs> that snaps the run. Brandon Robinson, who, as Corey mentioned, uh, last Saturday night was involved in a two-car crash. The uh, driver of the other car was sighted. He was not at fault, but Brandon still not right. If you've been in a car accident, you understand that even if you're not, quote, injured, you may not feel right for days or weeks going forward. Yeah, we got a chance to talk to Brandon a little bit right before the game, and, you know, he basically told us he was a little shook up, had some soreness, but he's looking forward to getting win number 880 for Roy Williams and hoping they can get that done here today this afternoon. Ryan Murphy coming off the bench. He's made 12 starts this year for Jeff Capel. Francis from the foul line. Terrell Brown making a difference inside. Quickly up ahead. And you see Coach Capel going a little deeper into his bench than he has in a couple of games. Gerald Drumgool. Here's Robinson for three. That was a great closeout by David Johnson. Thro throwing off the rhythm of Brandon Robinson, who's just knocked down the three pointer. David Johnson getting out there, recognizing that was a shooter, and just getting in his way, throwing off that rhythm, rhythm just a little bit. Johnson for three. Make it two. Foot on the line. Great play by Johnson there. Almost came up with the steal. But Doug, Xavier Johnson averaged 15.5 points a game last year, was all rookie team in the ACC. I'm not sure anyone would have imagined coming back this year into his sophomore season, he would be fourth in field goal attempts on this Pittsburgh roster. Ryan Murphy the steal. Here comes the aforementioned Xavier Johnson back to Murphy from the corner. He's got it! They go to Brooks, and he traveled. Well, this game on both sides includes a number of legacies. Players whose fathers made senior well-dressed men doing radio for the Panthers and getting to call out another three for Ryan Murphy coming out of the timeout from Jeff Cable. Eight points for Murphy. It's a 10-0 Pittsburgh run. And Ryan Murphy, out of the 31 three-point field goals he's made this season, 24 of them have come in this building. And it could be another one going up. Of course, Murphy showing restraint, but with the hot hand, surprised to see him hold up on that one in transition. And Corey, the story of the game as much as anything. Look at turnovers to assist. That is the sixth turnover already by Carolina. They've got just the one assist. And you pretty much flip those numbers so far for Pittsburgh. Well, and North Carolina has been good when they get the basketball inside to Garrison Brooks. And they've had an opportunity to score. But when you continue to give the basketball away and allow the Panthers to get out in transition, they're going to be extremely difficult to defend. Back to those father sons. Of course, the Anthony's didn't and don't play at the same school, but for the other four father sons, it's not the easiest thing to come to Pittsburgh and come to Carolina where your dad didn't just play, but each of those four fathers were Hall of Famers. Yeah, the the, uh, the father son game in this one, <laughs> it is going to be a four fingers and one thumb open hand slap.